Punt. All right. Okay, guys, come on. Okay, you got your instructions. Obey my commands. Protect yourself. Good luck. Touch them up. All right, here we go. Here we go, round 13. And when we asked the Malinaji camp about this fight, Lennox, that's what they said. When you asked them, what do you want? Pick up right where we left off okay, in the last ready, one. Ready, ready. Very ready important. Go. I mean, they've got their mindset. They want to do the same thing, but even more. See who made the adjustment? Remember, you know, you also get the feeling because of that one bad scorecard by the judge, Gail Van Hoy, you, you get the feeling that, you know, it turned out to be a draw. I mean, it was a win for Diaz. Could have been a draw, could have been a one point win for him or one point win for Malinaji. Malinaji says, I'm too fast for Diaz. I can see everything he's going to do. Before he does it, anytime he dips down, I know he's going to come with a punch. Diaz has more to lose between the two fighters in the sense that he was marketable and um, still had some big money fights ahead of him. Malinaji really didn't at that moment because he was beaten badly by Ricky Hatton. And so they, the Malinaji camp conceded all of the advantages, ring size, etc., to Diaz. This is yet another payday for Malinaji on his way to potentially bigger things should he win. But Diaz could get derailed. We should mention it in the first fight, 18 feet by 18 feet inside the ropes. This is 20 feet by 20 feet inside the ropes. Lennox, how big a difference is that two feet? A little bit of difference, uh, especially for a mover like Malinaji. You know, he can move a little bit more. But he's, you know, in this first round, he's definitely not moving. He's looking to fight. He wants to get out there and throw some punches. You know, Diaz says that in the first fight, he should have moved his head a little bit, a little bit more. And in this particular fight, he's been working on it. And this is what he wants to do. Move that head a bit more and not get caught with Malinaj's punches. Yeah, can, you, can you really change, though, when you're in your 38th fight? Can you change it that much where it's that effective? Sure. I mean, you can realize that, you know, look at the fight on tape. Realize you should have moved your head a bit more. Realize you got hit too much. And say to yourself, this is not going to happen in the next fight. Meanwhile, it's Malinaji who looks like he's made an adjustment here from the first fight, the sense that he's moving, but there's no wasted movement. And he's staking out the center of the ring. And that's true. He's, he's really doing limited movement because he believes in his foot speed and hand speed. So he can say, he can say, anytime he sees Diaz make a move, his feet are moving already. Right, like there, Diaz rushed him a little and Malinaji played Matador and got out of the way. But otherwise, there he is, flat-footed, just flat-footed enough, it seems, to control the action in the middle. And it looks like Diaz is trying to work off of Malinaji's jab, <laughs> waiting for Malinaji to jab so he can really work off of it and throw some combinations. I think he's holding back a bit too much right now. Malinaji heard some boos when he came in, that he heard the chance of Pauly. He's one that likes to mug to the crowd, but a good round for Malinaji. Good job, good job. How you feeling? Good. All right, now listen. Let's get more jabs off this round, okay? Okay. Let's put a little bit more pressure on it. But look, more jabs for me, okay? Okay. That's all I need, just a little bit more jabs. But look, when you get in close, let's start working that body on this guy early, okay? okay? Yeah, we waited a little bit too long for him. Right. Let's, let's, let's take the lead this round, okay? okay? But behind the left hand. Get to commit. Just be careful, be nice and sharp. Nice and relaxed. Yeah, yeah. If we need to press on that pedal, press on that pedal, okay? You adjust. Deep breath, baby. Deep breath. Beautiful. A little speed on that jab. Well, according to CompuBox, Malinaji outlanded Diaz 14 to 6. Ten of those were jabs. Diaz only threw eight power shots and landed two. We begin round number two. And Diaz says he wanted to throw more jabs as well because he, he allowed Malinaji to throw too much jabs in the first fight, and he said he wanted to jab with a jabber this time, but that first round didn't really show a lot of jabs by Diaz. He was 4 of 38 on his jabs. 
it makes sense to jab with the jabber because if the guy's jabbing at you, you might get hit anyway. It's not like a jab's going to knock you out. In the meantime, you can offset the rhythm of the other guy's jab and maybe land some of your own. Now the chant of Diaz for the Diaz fans here in Chicago. Oh, now he's smothering the onslaught from Diaz. Diaz wants Malinaji to stay still and fight it out with him, but, you know, Malinaji is doing the wise thing right now, staying at a distance and scoring from a distance. Well, you see what Malinaji's reaction was when Diaz said, come on and fight. Malinaji shook his, nodded like, yeah, I'll fight. And then, and then again, staked out his ground. And this is nothing new in Malinaji fights in terms of his early excellence. It's those middle rounds where he sometimes takes some rounds off and the other guy creeps into the fight. Diaz doesn't have that problem. He's consistent. Left hand by Diaz. There's a glancing blow. Crowd reacts as if it was more than that. What Diaz should be doing, every time Malinaji misses with a punch, he should take, seize that opportunity to counter punch at that time. Max, to go back to the point you just brought up about sometimes he sort of takes some rounds off, does that have to do with the fact that he's always had hand problems? And let's face it, he does not have a lot of power and he's trying to pace himself because he knows he can't finish somebody? But yeah, I mean, the boxers like Malinaji, who've become great fighters, not just good fighters, have something in them that allows them to maintain that consistency and control of their opponent consistently throughout the fight. That has not yet been Malinaji in his career. Cut on the left eye of Diaz, combination from Malinaji. And he looks very good early, you know, as usual. Yeah, Malinaji is looking very relaxed, very smooth, throwing some good, fast punches, using his feet very well, very confident in this round. And there in the battle of jabs, they each threw one. It was Malinaji that got through. He waits out the end of the round. End of Sit two. Down, right here. Right here. Boxing lesson is cut. How we feel? Come on, Joe, get in. Come on, get in, get in, get in. One, you gotta use your jab, okay? Oh, I got it, I got it. Here. You got to use your jab, okay? Look. You, you, gotta, the head butt. you got to use your jab, but you got to get close to this guy, okay? okay. You let him run too much now. Look, you got to cut him off. Mean chat. Deep breath. Deep breath. Easy night. Let's not do extras, okay? Go ahead. Deep breath. Referee Gino Rodriguez confirmed with me that the cut on the left eye of Juan Diaz was from a punch. You know, I'm interested to see how those first two rounds were scored because they were clearly Malinaji rounds. But it's not like Diaz didn't land anything at all. And if you have a judge who's bending over backwards to give a certain guy a round, potentially, from decisions we've seen recently, scorecards, um, what, someone could give one of those rounds to Diaz. I'm very curious to see if anyone did because Malinaji won both those first two rounds. Well, you saw Harold Letterman's scorecard pop up there. He gave the first two rounds to Malinaji. Harold knows how to score a fight. I, I thought he won the first two. He has been busier and he's been more accurate. And as we mentioned, neither guy really hits hard. I wouldn't say that they're either one of landing really damaging blows, but Malinaji has landed more clean shots. And hooks to the body, uppercut from Malinaji, then Diaz lands another left and a right hand on top of it. There, Diaz had a good series. Yeah, Diaz seized the opportunity. He was close to Malinaji, and he realized that he needed to throw some punches, and he threw some great combinations right there. He, he, uh, he lured Malinaji into his kind of fight. You saw at the end of the second round, Malinaji was standing flat-footed, 
egging Diaz on to come inside, and Diaz accommodated him there. Diaz is allowing Malinaji to be first, and, and this is how you win a fight. You're always first on the attack, and it looks good to the judges because the judges are going to say you're your scoring points, and you're more busier. Malinaji shot a left hand as he was going backward, caught the chin of Diaz. The combination for Malinaji, right a little bit short. Let him go, 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 let him go. Blocked by Diaz. Malinaji hooked to the body. Two of the three got through there. Yeah, and even in this round where Diaz had some success early, it's not like Malinaji wasn't landing anything in return. And since then, Malinaji started to outland Diaz again. According to the copy box numbers, he's outlanded him 16 to 8 so far in the round, Malinaji has. And he's thrown 22 more punches. It's going to be an interesting round as far as the scores when you look at it because there was that great moment for Diaz in the middle, but you can't discount what Malinaji's done on either side of it. Now this is going to be an interesting round to score. Yeah, I give it to Malinaji. And maybe that last combination that got in there helped. Diaz scores, they both score. That's why it's always important to score that, I mean, to fight that last 30 seconds. Because it leaves an impression on the judge's Go mind. That boy. And it's possible I spoke too soon. Look, you got to stay close to the man. It's not the water. What a water. Okay. Now listen. Listen, You see what your jab is doing for you? Get you got to keep one. the jab going at this man all the time. Okay. Just keep stepping with the jab with left face sometimes, okay? Now look, he's ducking when you get close to him. So start shooting out because as soon as you get close. Okay. okay? And then look. The jab and be careful. It's an easy fight. Let's not give him anything. Okay, we play, we're gonna give him some stuff. We don't want to do that. Okay, don't play too much. Okay, back on the jam. And you, this is the last seconds of that round where Diaz catches Malinaji with a couple flares of punches, two left hands there. Could that have been enough to win that round? Round four begins. Let's check in with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. Okay, Bob. I've got a three to nothing, 30 to 27, Paulie Malinaji. I tell you, Bob, I'm impressed with his boxing. I was impressed in rounds one. I was impressed in rounds two. Around three, Juan Diaz finally got off the stick and landed some shots. But even still, Paulie outboxed him. Paulie Malinaji is keeping his distance beautifully. I mean, Juan Diaz can't reach him from that distance. Juan has got to get in close to score. Paulie staying away, landing the up jab, landing nice combinations, and every so often dropping a straight right on him. Three to nothing, Malinaji. Well, in that last round, according to CompuBox, Malinaji landed 12 of 36 power shots. Diaz, in total in the round, landed 12 of 53 punches. Malinaji threw 28 more in the round. You know, as much as Paulie Malinaji talks about how a lot of times Diaz's flurries look good, but they don't really land, and if you really look, Paulie's rolling with the punch. Uh, the same thing can be said for Diaz. A lot of times, Paulie's combinations look good, and when you see them in slow motion, He's really not landing anything flush. I think the third round was not easy to score. I agree with Harold, however. And Diaz is throwing a lot more jabs, especially he's trying to get in there. As you can see, he's throwing double, triple jabs. But Polly's feet are just too fast. He's, he's stepping back and he's moving out of the way. Diaz smothered that little hook to the body before Malinaji could get extension on it. It's always been a great fight town in Chicago. It's got a great history. And the fans really into this fight. With no local rooting interest. Look it up, look it up. You're looking at two good world-class fighters here. Um, so far, some of the difference, not only Malinaji's boxing skill, his size. Malinaji's a real junior welterweight. And Diaz is really a lightweight coming up to Junior Welter. 
Malinaji looks like the bigger, longer fighter to me. Malinaji trying to get Diaz to attack so he could possibly counter. Those numbers sold up would be the first time that Diaz outlanded Malinaji in a round to this point. the fourth. Another close round. Beauty. Beauty. Look at me right here. You're looking like a million dollars. December 22nd, Real Same Sports ideas. returns with its you, annual year-end edition. Join Brian Gumbel and all the correspondents okay, as they discuss their most interesting and revealing stories from 2009. January 26th sees the return of 24-7, but this time, instead of boxing, it's NASCAR. We'll focus on four-time Sprint Cup champion Jimmy Johnson and his teammates as they prepare for the season opening Daytona 500. Stop busting on that cut. Bust on that cut with the right hand. Okay, right hand's left hooks. There's Olivia Diaz, Juan's mom. Born in Guetta, Mexico. He and she and Fidencio came to the United States, brought the kids along. Juan and his brother Jose have dual citizenship. He says, my family keeps me grounded. Made sure he got his college education. Graduated from the University of Houston downtown in May of this year, a political science degree. Would like to become a lawyer. Somewhere down the road. Been studying for his LSATs. Great kick. And this is what Diaz needs to do. He needs to try and get Malinaj up against the ropes and work his body, trying, trying to slow him down a little bit more. See Malinaj, he feels strong. Now he's on his toes a bit, but a lot of this fight, he has not been on his toes. And when he's not on his toes, he gives Diaz these kind of opportunities. Diaz is carrying the round. The right hand inside. Malinaji says, I'll trade with you. Yeah, you know, Malinaji doesn't need to trade with him at this point. You know, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. What he's been doing so far is been winning him the, the fight. Now he's making it a bit more even, especially making himself, putting himself in danger's way, especially with a big puncher like Diaz. They exchange a wry smile. El Torito, baby bull. Juan Diaz able to play the role of the bull. And Malinaji not playing Matador in that last sequence. Or at least a busy puncher like Diaz Lennox. Um, if not a big one. You, you could see part of, you know, Malinaji feels so comfortable and feels he can mix it up with Diaz that he's doing it. It seems to me almost as a sign that, look, I really feel in control of this fight. But that feeling can betray him because... In fighting that way, he lost control of this round. Oh, when you take into account, you know, rounds three and round four, you know, being close rounds that, I mean, could go either way, it might not be the kind of control that he really has. Right. See, this is the way Malinaji needs to be fighting. On the move, drawing punches, staying out of, the, out of range, and connecting with his own punches. Before this round, I think if you were looking for one to give to Diaz, it would be the third. Um, Diaz landed a lot of good shots in the first half of this round. And then in the fourth, for the first time in the fight, Diaz actually outlanded Malinaji, and he's got a sizable lead here in round five, just in the power connects. Yep. And it didn't seem that way to me in the fourth round, but... Certainly, it's, it's pretty obvious here. So Malinaji has yielded some turf, and Diaz has been able to take advantage of it. Diaz showing a little head movement to punctuate the end of the fifth. Okay, now listen, that was a better round, okay? You know why? Because you got close for the water. 
Okay? Because you got a little closer. Give me some more water. Look, you got a little closer that time, but look, I want you to hold around, keep this sucker pinned to the corner, okay? Look, he has to fight back when you... You already took his heart away from him, okay? So there's nothing left. Look at me here, okay? Give the, use your jabs over time right now. Hand speed and footwork. I'm not seeing no footwork. And this is Diaz really throwing some good combinations in there. This is what Malinaji needs not to be doing, standing in that type of close quarters to allow Diaz to throw his repertoire of punches. Any one punch can get through. Any one of those punches could be a, a punch that could cause a cut. Diaz landed 50% of his punches in that round, 24 of 48, 21 of 39 in the power connects. You heard Malinaji's corner saying, I don't see no footwork. I don't see it either from Malinaji. Those are kind of some of those rounds, though, where he gets out of his profile and he can lose control of the fight. Yeah. And fans of both fighters, when they see the slow motion replays, can say, well, those punches by Malinaji or Diaz, they weren't that devastating. I don't know what, you know, you could say it about both guys. The question is, who's landing the punches? In the last round, Malinaji did a poor job with his jab, only two of 34. Good body shot by Diaz, and he steps in with the right. When Malinaji lands on Diaz, it seems to be over a period of 30 seconds, 45 seconds. Paulie lands a shot, two shots, two shots, one shot. Then Diaz will have extended flurries where he seems to land five, six, eight punches, solid shots to Malinaji's head. And that's only when Malinaji is standing still. Sometimes Malinaji's focus could be off, you know, and he sits there and plays. And while he's playing, he gets hit by a couple shots. One minute to go on him. Another round that has its ebbs and flows for each guy. Right hand. Oh, oh Diaz is hurt. That right Shook hand. Diaz. Shook Diaz. In a round, Diaz was winning. Malinazzi's got him hurt. Uh, he's fooling around too much. Yep. Go to the body is what you should be doing, not messing around. Diaz is now losing a round he was winning, I think, based on the fact that he was hurt, but Malinaji's so unused to hurting his opponent. Bob, as you mentioned, he didn't follow it up. Well, Malinaji needs to be overworking that job right now, keeping Diaz's mind busy on that job so he can throw other combinations in there. Because when a guy's a little bit fuzzy, he has a little focus problem. One of the reasons why he only has five knockouts, he doesn't know how to finish or at least compound the opponent's problem. Don't know the point of any of that. Yo. Yo, okay, but okay. What the water? I want you to listen to me this round. Look, I want you to take a round off and just box for me this round. Okay. I, all I want you to concentrate on is moving your head. Mm -hmm. Moving your head and using your jab. I don't need a fast round this round, okay? Take the round off, okay? Okay. I want you to take this round off. Listen to me, okay? Uh -huh. Take this round off and then look. After this round, we go for a strong position. The Malinaji throws a good uppercut right on the Diaz's jab, causes him to flutter a bit with his feet. Lennox, can you explain after he lands this shot right to the chin and he sees his man hurt, he threw a little flurry, but then he mugged for 25 seconds at the end of the round and did absolutely nothing. He was, just, he was really just showboarding a little bit, showing Diaz like, oh, I caught you with that one. Now let me ask you this. You heard, uh, we'll bring in Howard Letterman for his unofficial score first. Okay, Bob, 59, 55, five rounds.
That's the one, Paulie Malinacci. I tell you something, I think it was a shame what he did in round six. I mean, he had Juan Diaz hurt. He should have jumped on him and not clown. But Paulie Malinacci, his natural ability is to clown, and that's all he was doing. As far as Ronnie Shields goes, I don't know what he's thinking about. His guy's losing a fight, he's telling him to take a round off. That's absolute nonsense. I, I mean, that's terrible advice from the corner. There's no excuse for it. Absolutely none. Juan Diaz has got to press. He's got to get inside. He's got to score. Five to one, Malinaji. Well, Harold, while I, 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 you, you and I have the same score at the moment, but there may be some wisdom in it in the sense that Diaz was hurt with an uppercut coming in last round, and maybe Shields just wants a round for him to get that out of his system, although the re replay showed that he wasn't hurt as badly as maybe we thought at first. Bob Papa, Lennox Lewis, Max Kellerman, ringside in Chicago, Pauli Malinaji and Juan Diaz in their rematch from their controversial fight in August. Victor Ortiz incurred a cut on the left eye of Antonio Diaz in our first fight. Diaz did not answer the bell for the start of the seventh round. It's still to come in its entirety from Bern, Switzerland. We will show you Vitaly Klitschko's heavyweight championship defense against Kevin Johnson. Lennox, I was gonna let, have you ever had a trainer tell you just take the round off, especially yeah. in a close fight? No, my, my trainer tell, tells me to take a round off after I've been winning a fight. So if I'm winning all the way through, you say, okay, take a round off, and then we'll start, start it up the next round. It's also not necessarily in the temperament of Juan Diaz as he keeps coming forward. That's yeah. his style. He seems to be working pretty hard for a guy taking a round off. You know, when Malinaji clowns, it's a signal. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm so in control here, I'm able to do this. It's like when a fighter gets behind his opponent. Um, spins him around, gets behind him. Look how fast I am, I can get behind you. But uh, the better way for Malinaji to demonstrate how in control he is, is by landing punches. And when he doesn't do that, you know, he could be down in this fight for all we know. See, Diaz doesn't want this fight in the center of the ring, so he needs to make it more of a fight on the ropes, where he sees Malinaji, or forces Malinaji to be moving a lot more, and hitting, hitting Malinaji to the body, trying to get to that body trying to break him down, especially there's a, a few rounds left, so he still needs to really pick up the pace. End of the seventh round, busier round for Malinaji and more accurate. Now they get a look at Vladimir Klitschko waiting for his brother Vitaly to fight. That man, Kevin Johnson, watching the hand wraps in Bern, Switzerland. Johnson, 30 years of age from Asbury Park, New Jersey, fighting out of Atlanta. He's 22-0-1 with nine knockouts. The biggest test in his career coming up tonight. Coming off a May 15th win against Devin Vargas, which Vargas took the fight on nine days' notice, and Johnson stopped him in round number six. But it's a big step up in class tonight in Switzerland as he takes on Vitaly Klitschko. He's sitting down too much. Rhythm, get on your toes now. He's done. Okay. So, you hear me? Focus now. Here in the corner of Malinaji, they're saying he's sitting down too much. That means, you know, when Diaz comes and throws punches at him. Malinaji takes two steps and he kind of sits down and then Diaz catches up with him and then he throws his repertoire punches and catches him and, and scores the points. So what should he do? Well, he needs to just stay on his toes like his corner says and, you know, look like Muhammad Ali. Again, he tried to land that right hand inside. Short right got in. This is where Diaz wants to fight, but Malinaji smart there, holds him. Now they reset to the middle, which is not advantageous for, D for Diaz. Here you see Malinaji landing clearly the more effective punches, more cleanly than Diaz. And yet, some of the clowning in the corner, it's not impossible to imagine that that's held against him, especially when Diaz seems eager to work. Malinaji goes to the body, Diaz tries to go to the body, a little low. 
Some boxers will hit low and allow the referee to warn them one time, but that may hinder his opponent a little, and in this case, Malinaji hindered him a little bit. Also, Malinaji does a lot of jumping around as he tries to move away, and then he goes airborne. He changes his belt line, too. Yeah, I think Diaz is trying to slow him down with that punch. That's a good point, Bob. when Malinaji kind of stands in the middle of the ring. Now he moves away, but in the sequence before he stands in and he kind of just turns. Isn't that where Diaz has to put punches together and jump on him like here? Yeah. Hit him to the body. Hit him anywhere he can hit him. Not really just be a headhunter, but he's got a whole body to hit and mix up the punches. Make Malinaji think about what's coming at him. All these punches are getting blocked. Good left hand to the body by Diaz. Misses as we come to the end of round eight. Sit down right here. Listen to me. Listen to me. Okay, listen to me. I got the cup. Look at me. Okay, you're falling into this game right now, and we don't need that bullshit right now because we're ahead. Okay? Why to the state that take a rest? You understand? You don't need no rest. You ain't very safe. Hey, hey, Ralph. I hey, showed you the punch Watch numbers. Now let's take a look on, at man. where Fali Malinaji has done most of his work. And you see uh, 49 up yeah, around the that, eye man. area. He's gotten 45 okay, on the chin. Down, okay? able to land that, that though, okay? right hand to the body a little bit. He's landing at to total in the fight at 23%. Landing his power shots at 22%. Malinaji has. Okay. As you get a look at Punch Zone, trying to bring it inside the numbers here in Chicago. Round number nine begins, scheduled for 12. You, you see the issue with scoring in this fight. I thought Malinaji won the first two rounds, but there have been, you know, talk about swing rounds that can decide a fight that could go either way. There have been a bunch of them, I think, and I've given most of them to Malinaji, but I could understand certainly reasonable people could disagree. People giving them to uh, Juan Diaz. And so uh, at this point in the fight, you imagine there are probably some close scorecards. Hey, you, know, you look at rounds three and four just to highlight two of them. Yeah. And seven and eight. Malinaji well, pumping out that jab as he backs away from Diaz. Trying to get to the right range for him. And this is working in Malinaji's favor because what he's doing is getting off first all the time. Every time there's a clinch or something and they come back to fight, Malinaji always starts it off with his jab. There it goes again. Start off that jab. So he's always being first. In a fight, if you're first and you're last, you're winning that fight. You know, Max, in, in, when you look at Diaz when he had those seven defenses of his lightweight title, he was always the busier guy, the guy with the high volume. But in these fights with Malinaji, he's the one that gets out work. That's to Malinaji's credit, uh, working more consistently than he has in the past. And also, though he's done it more in this fight, uh, in the last fight, and also often throughout this fight, he's not giving Diaz a stationary target to hit. And, you know, Diaz is not one of those boxers that really want to use their jab all the time. 
Mal Naj is the, the, the boxer that uses his jab all the time. And then when you get both of them together, you know, Diaz may feel that, oh, Mal Naj has a better jab than me. So, you know, I'm comfortable trying to get him to his body. But this time he said he wants to work on his jab. He wants to jab with a jabber. And you can tell he's improved with his jab in this particular fight compared to the first one. And Mal Naj is also a natural junior welterweight. As I mentioned earlier, uh, half a division, so to speak. Bigger than Diaz. That cuts opened up a little bit on the left eye of Diaz. Again, Malinaji illustrate that point. 18 more punches thrown here in the round. He's out connected him 11 to 6 according to Compu Box at this point. Malinaji said he's been doing a little bit of sparring and he got a little nick over his eye. But in this fight, it didn't seem to bother him, and it didn't seem to open up. That's what I'm talking about now. That's my poly. That's my poly. All night long. That's the poly we know. Look at me, have fun. Okay? Easy work. Pull it out. Easy work. You hear me? Easy work. Deep breath. Deep breath. This is the tenth coming up. Okay, baby, let's go now. Let's fucking take it and run. Go home with it. Okay, it's our time, it's our Christmas. You hear me? He had his Christmas over there. It's over. Let's touch him. So listen, look, you gotta get this guy and you gotta go behind your jab, number one. Number two here, you gotta just bro, bum rush this guy now, okay? We can't wait on the outside no more. You let him run too much. Right. Okay? Okay. Use your face and go in. You gotta two, go in. And one, you'll stop it and let yeah. him first. Don't let this don't walk, don't do Come on. Again. Why not? Yes, yeah, we get. Round number 10 begins for Juan Diaz and Pauli Malinaji. No knockdowns in the fight. Let's check in with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. Okay, Bob. 87, 84, six rounds to three, Pauli Malinaji. Bob, I really understand now why he wanted a big ring. I mean, this guy is, is the essence of ring generalship. Think about Pauli Malinaji. He uses that big ring beautifully to keep Juan Diaz at a distance where Juan Diaz can't get inside and score with those hard shots. Pauli stays on the outside. He throws that up jab. You know, every so often he throws a combination, drops the right hand on him, you know, and, and is totally outboxing him. Juan Diaz got inside nicely to win rounds eight and nine with hard shots. But basically, it's Malinaji using that big ring. Six to three, Pauli Malinaji. And I asked Diaz about that ring, does it affect him? He says he trains in a big ring all the time, so he's used to a 20-foot ring. You can tell the way a fight's going, and I actually thought Malinaji won the last round. Um, although there were a couple rounds earlier that I gave to Malinaji, I could understand someone giving to Diaz, so I have it pretty wide for Malinaji at this point. But you, you listen to what the corners say in between rounds. In Diaz's corner after the last round, it was, you have to get inside. Malinaji's corner, it was, keep doing that. Earlier, when Malinaji let Diaz back into the fight, it seems, um, Diaz's corner was like, more of that, and Malinaji's corner was saying stuff like, get back on your toes. And Malinaji has controlled the action, as Harold pointed out, and we've all kind of pointed out. He's used that ring, he's turned away from a lot of the punches, and Diaz never, never really able to get consistent workflow going. And with, with scoring controversies, it's not an issue that it's a competitive fight and one guy has a wide scorecard um, in what seems like a, an evenly matched fight. The controversy comes where you have... Well, they're counting that a knockdown. No, I didn't understand that one unless his glove touched the ground. I don't believe it did. Even so, it seemed like a slip in the middle of the ring on, this, on the Takate sign. Well, if you if you get hit and you're off balance, I've never seen that before where a referee counts you, counts, gives you an eight count because you've slipped or your balance is off. And there's no standing eight count. Oh. Uh, in the rules, there's no standing eight count. So unless that glove hit the ground, I, I don't believe his glove did touch the ground. Well, if his glove hit the ground, he's supposed to wipe it off first. So it didn't touch the ground. So it's been ruled a knockdown here at the end of round number 10. Oh. All 
right, baby. How we feel? How we feel? Good. Okay, now listen to me. All right? Yeah. No. Stop rushing in. You're just rushing in now. Mm -hmm. Okay? You got to go in behind your jail, Juan. Okay? Right. You got to set things up. Okay? Yeah. You have to set things up. You set it up behind your jab. When he jabbing, you got to keep jabbing with him. But when you get to him, I'm over. That's it. We're going now down the stretch. Okay? Over. Let's call him like we did in Texas. You hear me? Yeah. Okay. Deep breath. All right, let's take a look at it right here. It was ruled a knockdown. It's behind the head, puffing. Wow. I mean, did that glove really touch the ground? And well, that's not a punch that should even been ruled. No, it didn't touch the ground. He, he actually got hit behind the head, lost his balance. Referee should have really just said, you know, no hitting behind the head. And turned him around and made him box again. I mean, it looked like the glove may have touched, but it was from a punch that was from behind the head. Yeah, it was It was a cuff. He got pulled down. The edge should not have been ruled a knockdown, obviously. And you know, sometimes when Malanji throws that wide right hand, he slips to that side, so it gives him a get out when he throws that right hand. But incidentally about that, because it was scored a knockdown and Malanaji appeared to have won the round, you just saw Harold's card, 10-8. You're compelled to give him the extra point. But, but controversial scoring, getting back to that theme for a moment, arises when there are definitive rounds that fighter A wins and yet fighter B is, get, is awarded those rounds anyway. When you can point to specific rounds, you know one guy won, but they gave it to the other guy. Left hand by Diaz. You saw that last week in the Sergio Martinez, Paul Williams fight. Diaz yes. with a double left. Diaz should be throwing that double double left hook for sure. <laughs> so Paul is looking over at us saying, I blocked it. Just worry about the fight. Right, we know you blocked it, Paulie, no, 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 but no. you don't get points. It's not like you hit Diaz. And it's not as if the first one didn't land, but right. the second one was blocked. We've seen them both block and slip punches tonight. We've also seen them both land. Um, here at ringside, it seems we think we've seen Malinaji land more, but everyone may not feel that way. Chant of Diaz again as the Diaz fans trying to rally Juan Diaz. Diaz steps in with a right hand that snaps back the head of Malinaji. You know, with Malinaji's long hair, too, when he gets hit, I don't necessarily think Diaz is hitting him any harder than he's hitting Diaz, but the sweat flies. Mm -hmm. And it looks good. It looks like a bigger punch. Malinaji ducks away from danger there as Diaz tries to apply the pressure. Both exchange stiff jabs. Talking to us ringside is also a way of Malinaji showing, look, I'm able to do something because I'm so in control of the fight I really shouldn't be able to do. I can take my attention off of Diaz. That doesn't score you any points either. And that big wide hook from Diaz as Malinaji picks off most of it. Hello, hello. We look at Pauli Malinaji's hairdo. He's got Pauli in the back. Well, still to come, the post finance arena in Bern, Switzerland. An electric atmosphere for the heavyweight title fighters Vitaly Klitschko makes the third defense of his portion of the heavyweight championship against Kevin Johnson. You'll see it next no, here on Boxing to. After Dark. They can see for themselves. Okay, we got to stick to our game plan. Last round. Okay, champ. Last round. Let's box the shit out of him. Okay? But listen, but listen. I don't want you running in, Juan. Okay, you keep your head up. Use your face before you go in there. Okay, but look. I need you to keep low. Sometimes double that hook up, then double the right hand up behind the hook. Okay? But you got to stay close. Now, let's box. Nice yep. deep breath. Nice boxing lesson. Now, moving. Dance around. Touch. Three minutes. Three minutes. Put your hands together. This is the 12th and final round. We're in the copy box. Malinaji has landed 32 more punches than Diaz. 
He's been busier. We'll see how it unfolds in round 12. Lennox for Diaz. He's never recorded a knockout past the ninth round. How does he seize control this last round? He's got to let it all hang out this last three minutes or two and a half minutes right now. Find some way of trying to get to Malinaji without running in and getting caught with punches himself. You know that controversial cuff behind the head ruled a knockdown could be a huge factor in these cards, which could be closer than maybe we see it. You know, there should be a remedy for that. Yeah, replay. Yeah. But maybe... The sport is already too subjective. You like objective scoring criterion, but maybe that should, that should go into the rules as a subjective score. In other words, if a guy gets credited with a knockdown, but you can clearly see it wasn't as a judge, Maybe you shouldn't be forced to give him the extra point. Referee warning, Paul Malanji with his elbow. He's been using his elbow a little bit. So the referee thinks. I haven't seen too much of it. Look it up, look it up, look it up. A couple times, but I've seen both guys do it with short crosses inside where the elbows come in. Sometimes it's a defensive move. You're trying to get your hand up and your elbow comes up to try and block the other guy's punch. Well. Diaz doing some good work here. So much for all the boxing that Malinaji was supposed to do. He's in Diaz's wheelhouse. And Diaz is winning the round. Doubles the left hand. Malinaji blocked it. Right scored by Diaz. Malinaji tries to come back with an uppercut inside. One minute to go. Oh, I understand what Malinaji is doing with that elbow now. What he's doing is trying to push off Diaz and he's using the elbow. But sometimes it can be judged as a punch. Malinaji counters with the left after Diaz scores the body. This is shaping up as a 7-5-8-4 type fight for Malinaji with the unfortunate extra point. See how the uh, the judges have to say. Good round 12 for Diaz. Great end, fun fight. Now the real drama begins. Judges scoring. I think the worst thing they can say is this, this fight's a draw. Cut over the left eye of Diaz, never a huge factor in this fight. Joe Chavez did a good job handling that. See Harold Letterman's scorecard, 115-112. At round 10, that controversial ruled knockdown. How will that factor in? Remember, there are some rounds, three and four and seven, tight rounds. As you take a look at the judges, Mario Di Fiori from Illinois won title fight. His notable Adamek's decision over Briggs, scored a draw. Thomas Miller from Ohio, 35 title fights. Cotto's decision over Clotty, he had it for Clotty. And uh, Michael Pernick from Florida, 47 title fights, and Dawson's decision over Johnson in their second fight. He had it for Dawson, 115-113. All right, let's go back to round number 10, where the controversy was, Lennox. And here is the ruled knockdown. You see Malinaji cuff him from behind. Diaz, and it looks like the glove just touched. That was ruled a knockdown by Gino Rodriguez, thus making it potentially a 10-8 round for Malinaji. But I'm saying if the glove touched, then the referee's supposed to wipe it off and say, okay, the glove did touch the canvas, and you're going to get an 8. Well, I, I think he did eventually clean it off, but Harold 
That's where a replay would really come well, in handy yeah, after the round. Well, that's what I was going to say. If we had instant replay, they could have seen that, that, you know, he didn't knock him down. It was a cuff behind the head. He threw him down. I mean, without question, instant replay would have, would have uh, fixed that. You know, it wouldn't have been a knockdown. Even if his glove touched, it wouldn't have made a difference. It, it, it wasn't by a legal punch. All right, you could have reviewed it in 10 seconds in between the rounds. All right, Correct. let's see how the judges had this one scored. Here's Joe Antonacci. Boxing fans, after 12 rounds of action for the NABO Junior Welterweight Championship, we go to the judges' scorecards. And all three of our judges, Moro Di Fiore, Thomas Miller, and Michael Pernick, score the bout 116 to 111 for the winner and the new NABO junior welterweight champion of the world from Brooklyn, New York, Paulie, the man.